This is Donald Trump's world and we're just living in it. And I'm not saying that to praise the president. I'm saying it because every day when I look to politics to track how the 2020 race is going, what's the big news? What do we get? Trump, 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 nonstop, all day, every day. And the media knows it. They know that Trump does things to distract us, but they just can't quit. They love it too much. There's the Trump bump and there's Trump derangement syndrome. They just won't stop. So every day I will pop up these various political websites. I will look to the top trending news and it's just Trump all day, nonstop. Trump won partly because he was able to dominate the media in 2016. This was acknowledged by professors, by journalists, by so many people, by activists, by the Democrats. Yet even still, with so many journalistic outlets opposing the president, they refuse to acknowledge the reality. Now, it is quite annoying when these sites automatically refresh themselves, but let's do this. I just did a search for the word Trump. Politico. Now, I admit, Politico is a political website meant to talk about top issues. And we can see 53 instances of the word Trump appearing on their front page. Certainly, there are other political things to talk about, right? No. It's a death spiral. It is a cycle that can never end. I'm talking about Trump in a video about why we talk about Trump too much. I was looking through my YouTube channel, this one, and I was like, man, I have a lot of pictures of Trump. Why is that? And then I realized what was happening to me was that when I was looking for the big trending stories, it was Trump. And so I'd say something like, okay, well, here's a story. Let's cover it. Let's talk about this issue. What does it mean? Why are people, I want to, I want to dissect this issue. And in the end, once again, I created more Trump content and everyone is trapped in this cycle and Trump knows it. It's part of his strategy. He distracts the press, the press acknowledges it and they play the game. So I do try my best to make sure I'm tackling stories that aren't just about Trump, right? Because the other day, a report was released showing that Facebook has made changes because, yeah, there was a bias against conservatives. But those Trump stories never end. Today, the big story that's trending on Twitter, Joe Walsh may run against the president. And I thought, okay, I guess there's the big story. Joe Walsh wants to primary challenge Trump. And then I'm like, am I really going to do another video on this guy? Isn't there something else to talk about? I guess I could talk about Joe Walsh, but the story is Joe Walsh to Trump and Joe Walsh will never win. Everybody says it's a long shot. It's a waste of time. And we can talk a little bit about this. But first, we're going to dive into the issue of the media obsession with Trump and how Trump, it it plays to his advantage. Now, I don't necessarily blame him for getting all the bad press. The media is obsessed with the man. Look, the guy was a celebrity before he became the president, so he knows how to get attention. But for some reason, I just, I just, I imagine the American population is looking starry-eyed at Trump, half angry, half happy, saying, I just can't quit you. And that's the fact. And so I thought, am I going to make a video about Trump again? You know what? No, I am, but I'm going to point out what's happening. So let's do this. Before we get started, head over to TimCast.com slash donate if you'd like to support my work. It's a PayPal option, a crypto option, a physical address. But of course, the best thing you can do is just share this video help get me past that deranking. YouTube deranks independent political commentary so that, you know, CNN, Fox News, MSNBC get propped up and I get knocked down. More importantly, though, let's break some echo chambers by sharing this. People who might not see it may watch it. Now, a lot of people probably won't, but hey, maybe if it's a video talking about how the media is propping up Trump inadvertently because they're obsessed with them, people on the left might hear this. You know, I think that's the big issue. Again, I don't blame Trump for the media wanting to rag on him. They're chasing the ratings. And because of this, Trump gets press. So a lot of people who might disagree with him are tired and they tune it out. And the people who love him are talking more and more about it because the media won't stop. Here we go. The Hill. Again, The Hill is a political website. I totally get it. 37 instances of the word Trump appearing on their front page. All right. The Washington Post. Okay. Well, they talk about politics, but they talk about everything, right? Florida and and Fresno and apartheid. 20 instances of the word Trump on their front page. Look at the yellow everywhere. (laughs) Now we have the Atlantic. 14 instances of the word Trump on their front page. However, I will stress, they still have, like it says, Proud Boys over here. There's Brexit. It seems like there is a theme. One of the biggest factors driving the culture war probably is the media's singular obsession with with, with, with the same concepts. Can we please... 
as a media, talk about something else? Why don't you guys pop over to youtube.com slash subverse news? All right, we recently raised a million bucks. Thank you all to everybody who invested. And you will find not very much Trump talk. Because one of the one of the, the couple things we're trying to do over at Subverse, and again, it's being run by a separate editorial team. I'm, 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 I am in a different state right now, is issues that people are ignoring and not talking about. And we recognize sometimes people watch it. We did a video about Sudan internet censorship because we thought it was important people knew this was happening in this part of the world. And we can look to how it affects their population and how it might affect us if we allow censorship to continue on, on a mass scale. Not a lot of people want to watch it. But you will find a lot of uh, news about science, technology, uh, social media issues. Sometimes there's issues about, uh, about the president, but we keep it uh, tempered and rational. 14 instances of the word Trump on the front page of The Atlantic. Next up, CNN. 11 instances of the word Trump on the front page of CNN. Hey, CNN's doing better, right? And they actually have way more stories. than uh, That's surprising, right? I know a lot of people want to rag on CNN, but hey, there's many more links and there's much less Trump. In fact, it looks like in their political section, they, they admit that Trump doesn't appear in their breaking news and top stories just in politics. So I got to say, good on you, CNN, for segmenting this at least. You know, Washington Post, not so much. Then we have the New York Times, lastly. And this may be the most impressive. And it's because it's the New York Times. Now, I disagree with a lot of their, uh, the trend and how they're hiring. But look at this, five instances of the word Trump appearing on their front page. Now, I will stress, it's not that the word Trump is going to tell you if the story is or is not about him. It may be true that there are stories that are about Trump that don't use the word in the headline, which means we are actually drowning in Trump more than we realize. In fact, in this story, it appears there's an instance of Trump that wasn't caught by the search. Let's try this again. Yeah, okay. So now it says six because it didn't catch that first one. So six instances of the word Trump on the front page of the New York Times. Not that bad. But I also want to stress that still seems kind of crazy to me. Now, here's the thing. I have evidence. I have proof. This is crazy. We are living in Trump's reality and no one can escape it, which means the only thing you'll hear about is this man. He has nearly infinite media value. I read something once that in like 2016, Trump was given $5 billion of free press. I could be wrong on the number. It's been a while. But because of the constant stories about him, it helped him get elected. Listen, when you write a story saying, here we go, opinion, Trump, Greenmark, Greenland, Denmark, is this real life? You will find a couple things. Some people go, you're irrationally upset with the president and I'm so angry with you, screw it. And they go and vote for him anyway. Some people see the story where you're trying to be negative and they laugh and say, hey, that's actually a cool thing. You are giving, like, listen, I've explained this to so many people. Everything I say is positive and negative, depending on your tribe. I could say something like, why is the media obsessed with with Trump and talking about him all the time? And Trump supporters are probably happy about it, laughing, saying the president's getting free press and it's going to help him win. And other people are saying, this is absurd. He's right. Why are they doing this? It's a bad thing. Different people will view the information positively or negatively. So if I say, did you know Donald Trump was trying to buy Greenland? What a fool. Half of people might say, Actually, that's a pretty good idea. It's a lot of resources in Greenland. I like the idea of Trump trying to get us new territory in the Arctic Circle to compete with Russia. Hey, even though the media is trying to be negative about it, they're still giving positive press. There's no such thing as bad press. So you look at all of these just like my, my mind is blown. Look, look, I'll say it again. I was going through my YouTube list and I see like three Trump pictures, then a picture of, you know, Ocasio-Cortez, then three Trump pictures. And I'm like, how come it's so much Trump? And I had this moment where I was like, when I'm looking at the top trending news and some of the most important stories, birthright citizenship, you know, the border wall, Greenland, all the things that trend, I was like, I'm talking about this because I'm trying to make sure I cover the biggest news in politics for my main channel. And then I realized, is that what everyone else is doing too? Somewhat. I'm sure, oh, you can see, so the New York Times updates in real time. That's where the Trump story, that that Trump story popped up as we were filming. So there are people like at the New York Times that say, okay, we should talk about this. This is a big issue. And it creates a never ending cycle. The more people talk about him, the more people talk about him. And now it's time for some data to prove it. Check this out. Measuring the media's obsession with Trump. Now this is from about nine months ago or so. They say, 
Since he rode down the Trump Tower escalator in June 2015, Donald Trump has loomed large over the media landscape. From the, from the mail bomber to the Khashoggi slang to Bush's for, uh, Bush 41's death, news outlets have organized their stories to emphasize Trump, while often undermining his legitimacy. In doing so, the press has devoted so much attention to him that he has in some ways helped revive American journalism. <laughs> what? It turns out that the media's obsession with the president is greater than one might imagine. Recently, there was a story. There was like a leaked chat log from the New York Times where they were saying something about how they dedicated the paper's coverage to Russiagate, talking about Trump. And now they're switching to Trump and bigotry. Why is your singular story Trump? I don't care. Now I will stress, the New York Times' front page does way better than the other outlets I've pulled up. Admittedly, Politico and The Hill are meant to be about politics in Washington, so of course Trump would appear a lot there. But the, you know, the Atlantic, CNN, they still have a lot of stories about Trump. So when the New York Times says in these leaked chats, assuming they're real, we are going to focus on Trump. And then when a story dies, they go, we're still going to focus on Trump. I'm like, y'all are obsessed. You are obsessed, dangerously obsessed. And I'm getting angry about it because I don't want to talk about Trump all day. Trump, Trump goes on Twitter and says, I ate a cheeseburger. And then all of a sudden, everyone's like, oh God, cheeseburgers. And then you see a bunch of like meme videos where they're like, cheeseburger. I'll tell you this. Who's the most influential person in the world right now? I Hands down, Donald Trump. Hands down, Donald Trump. Argue with me. Change my mind. I just do not see it. You can talk about celebrities, Kim Kardashian. You know, you can talk about Bill Gates and their wealth. Nah, not only is, the, is he the president, but they won't stop talking about the man. And here I am, paradoxically talking about him while complaining about how everybody talks about him too much. There's no escape. We're in a whirlpool of Trump's world. Check this out. So this story is, I believe, from like a December or so, but check this out. The timeline below shows the total percentage of airtime as measured in 15 second intervals of the combined CNN, MSNBC and Fox News daily coverage from June 09, the starting point of the data, to present that mentioned Trump or Obama using data from the GDELT project's processing of the Internet Archive's television news archive. Now, Trump got elected around this point, right? Oh, I'm sorry. This is his campaign. Here's uh, getting close to his election. Compare the red line to the blue line. During Obama's presidency, his biggest spike was when he was up for re-election, when he was about to be re-elected. And it does not compare to where Trump even is at today. Obama's peak, the most coverage he ever got, is still lower than Trump's average. Isn't that mind-blowing? Why? Why? I don't get it. Well, you know, the guy likes tweeting. The guy likes saying things. He's bombastic. But I, I think it comes down to the Trump bump for one. And I'll admit it. Check it out. When I look at stories that I've covered, Trump stories do really, really well. I wouldn't be surprised if this one is de- it does decently well, especially because the title is funny and it's a silly concept. And so- certain stories like about Rashida Tlaib did not do nearly as well. I get it. But I don't judge my content. I actually, I, I make a video, I publish it, I walk away. I don't, I don't like looking at analytics. I don't, you know, there's a lot of people in media who are obsessed with ratings. This might be a factor. Trump drives good ratings, right? So people are, are, are gravitating towards stories that they think will do well because they want that high. We know, or at least we've seen, we heard the anecdotes, that when social media producers don't get that many views, they start getting depressed. They start getting angry. Their views go down for one reason or another, and then they start they feel like they're sinking in quicksand. Why? Why isn't it going up, up, up? Growth should be there. It should be indefinite. So people in media probably react the same way. How many views did my article get? A million? Wow. I'm going to write about Trump tomorrow. A lot of companies drive this because they know it makes them money. Talk about Trump and we'll get paid. So let's do this. We'll come back to the story. Check this out. I pulled up some data. Google Trends search terms, Obama and Trump going back to June, January of 2004. We can see here, in November 2008, Obama got his biggest spike in Google search, and Trump was not even on, doesn't even register. But we can see that Obama's biggest spike during his election is around half. Actually, I should say, yeah, it's around half of what Trump's spike. So this, this, this graph is, is, is a relative graph. So the top is 100 and the bottom is zero. Trump obviously has the 100 mark simply because he searched for substantially more than Obama. Relative to Trump's peak, Obama's first election was... 54, I believe it was. I can't. It's so hard. There we go. 56. 
Obama, Obama search was way, way lower than Trump. Now, this is different from the media mentions of Trump. And I stress this because it's not just that the media is obsessed with Trump. The reality is, the reason why I said we are in, uh, this is Trump's world and we are just living in it, is because even regular people are obsessed with searching for the president. Look at this. Obama's, what is the second term here? November of 2012, when Obama was reelected, a 26. People didn't search that much. They didn't care. Now, it could be that people are searching for Trump because the media won't stop. Because you hear a story on TV about Trump, 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 and then someone searches for it. That means there's probably a lot of people who are searching for a fact. They're, they're trying to fact check. Is that real? Can I read about this? So take a look at, you know, Trump's first term and the relative traffic he's getting. So I'll just grab March of 2018. Trump has a 22. We can go back to March of, what's, 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 what's the right date? March of uh, 2009. And, oh, no, no, 2019, that doesn't make sense. Let's do uh, 2010. So let's do March of 2010, and we have Obama, eight. Eight, so nearly three times the search, search traffic. This shows us that although it is the media that is absolutely obsessed with Trump, something is happening. A, a, a correlation is not causation. I don't know who started it. It could be that because all of us search for Trump so much, the media chases after it. It could be that because the media talks about it so much, we can't help but search for the man. But they, they document this. So let's, let's read a little bit more of this story about the media obsession with Donald Trump. This story is from December. It's, it's from uh, last December. They say Trump's first major bump came in spring 2011 when he publicly toyed with the idea of running for president. The mere idea of Donald Trump in the Oval Office was enough to propel news interest in him to levels equal to those of then President Obama. Take a look at that. When, when Trump announced he might run, he was getting, he, his, his news coverage reached parody with Donald Trump, I'm sorry, with Obama, who was the president and was running again. That's that, the interest in Trump. It's, it's palpable. You know, I, I can't put my, I don't know why. I'll, I'll, I'll say this. I know there's probably a lot of Trump supporters watching, so comment. Why? <laughs> you know, people just love it. They love talking about the guy. They don't want to let it go. They mentioned that there were similar bumps. In May 2012, um, a media obsessed with Trump's rising political clout. Yet his meteoric rise to the stratosphere came about almost overnight when he announced his candidacy for president on June 16th, 2015. In the weeks after his announcement, the three television channels paid more attention to him than they did Obama's re-election race in all of 2012. Why? No, seriously, I don't know why. Obama was called a celebrity candidate. They said he's going to win because he's got celebrity gravitas. I get it. You know, uh, Trump is a, is a celebrity too. But what about Trump's announcement got more coverage than Obama's re-election? Mind blowing. So that, that also consider the things Obama did that were horrifying were ignored by the media. That's a big, a big point that needs to be, to, be, to, uh, to be stated. A lot of what Obama did was ignored. The disposition matrix, the NDAA, the, A, the, re the, the authorization for use of military force in the Middle East, bolstering troops in the Middle East, secret wars in Yemen, however you want to describe it. I know it's contentious. No coverage. But now the media obsession with Trump, they're saying Trump's a liar. Trump's a liar. And I say, like, well, actually, I think Obama was a liar too. I think politicians are liars. And I think the issue is he just didn't care. Now, it could be this. It could be that the media liked Obama. You know, check this out. How, uh, how the media created the president from uh, November 2016, just after his election. They say, on the 30th of, of September 2016, the San Diego Union Tribune made history. For the first time in its 140-year history, it endorsed a Democrat candidate, Hillary Clinton. It was also a first in the 126 years for the Arizona Republic. Donald Trump was not popular with America's newspaper. Of the top 100 circulation print newspapers, two endorsed him. More than 200 papers supported Clinton, while Trump received the backing of fewer than 20. You want to talk about a liberal media? You want to talk about a bias in the press? Come on. More than 200 papers supported Clinton. The top 100 papers, 98 supported Clinton. They did not like this man, and they were obsessed with writing about him. That says to me that the smears and everything we're hearing are just due to the fact that they hate him. They're biased against him. But in the end, as I stated earlier, if you write a story saying Donald Trump wants to indefinitely detain migrants, which is a story going around right now, I hope you realize there are people who are going to be like, well, let me look into that. And they're going to read about the rule and be like, okay. 
and they might like it. You might think it's a negative story because it's your po- political view. You're not realizing that, what, listen, when someone who say a Democrat comes out and says Trump is a bad man for wanting to build the wall, the people who don't like Democrats are going to be like, well, if you hate it, I'm going to like it. Other people are going to say, wait, wait, what was that? Trump's going to build a wall? Hey, I like that. Just because you say it doesn't mean everyone will assume it's bad and they don't get it. I don't think the media understands this. There is no such thing as bad press. All you do is guarantee that the people who might support the president will. Okay. And yes, the people who won't support him already don't support him. You know, when I talk to people who hate the president, say, I, st- I do not listen to the news. I can't stand hearing about him. I'm not going to vote for him. I say, okay. Then I hear about other people and they're like, who, who say they're going to, some of them are saying it's because they're sick of hearing about him. Okay, fine. You know, you hate him so much. Good. You get what you deserve. But others are like, oh yeah, I, did you know that Trump was going to do X? I'm like, that was a hit piece about him. They're like, oh yeah, but you know, I like it. Look at this. I did a story a couple days ago talking about how Trump fractured the Democratic Party. No, no, no. It was a story about how a moderate was threatening to vote for Trump because of the far left policies. Here's a guy who heard all of the worst things about Trump. And he said, well, you know what? He, he, here's a guy who believes that Trump won't condemn the worst of the worst, you know, the Charlottesville stuff. And he said he was going to vote for the guy. He was considering voting for the guy. The media press attention did nothing. The lie does nothing. You hear it over and over again. Joe Biden says Trump refused to condemn the groups in Charlottesville. He did. Trump said they should be condemned totally. You know, they they cut that context out because Trump was referring to people who wanted to pull a statue down. And then he said, but they should be condemned. Criticize him for that. Talk. you, You can, you're allowed to, but they ignore it. So then what happens is even people who hear that awful smear don't care. And that's the big takeaway. If a moderate can hear that Trump is a white nationalist and not care, you got bigger problems. And no matter how much you talk about how the orange man is bad, you are helping him. Isn't that mind blowing? Two of the top 100 circulation print papers, two endorsed him. More than 200 papers supported Clinton. And did it help you? No. Go watch that Simpsons episode. It's a treehouse of horrors where the advertisements come to life. And they start singing, just don't look, just don't, you know, you know, you know the episode I'm talking about? I mean, Simpsons has, Simpsons has really fallen from grace, but you, you, you get, it's, it's, it's like a, a concept. It's a meme. In this episode, they say, if you just stop looking at it, it will die off. But as long as you keep your focus on it, it will never go away. There's a lot of reasons Trump is going to win, in my opinion. I believe Trump has uh, the economic advantage, the incumbent advantage. Trump fatigue, I believe, will benefit Trump. People are sick and tired of hearing about him. So that doesn't mean that they're going to uh, not vote for him. It means they're going to just say, I'm done, and they're going to stop listening. And then when real bad news comes out, they're going, I don't want to hear it. I'm tired of it. Some people, they argue, have Trump fatigue, and so they're going to vote against him. I'm like, no, you don't understand. When you're fatigued, you don't get out of bed to go vote. You put a pillow over your face and turn the lights off and say, leave me alone. The other thing is, it's free press. And they always, it's, it's, we know it. There's no such thing as bad press. So when we can talk about a strong economy, record low unemployment, the incumbent advantage, Trump's Republican party support is over 80%, the highest it's, the Republican support has been for a long time for anybody. And then you hear these stories about like Joe Walsh wants to run a primary challenge, Bill Weld. It's a waste of time. Trump has the base. He has the Republicans and he's got free press all day. And you think it's bad? You think saying orange man bad does anything for you? I covered a story recently. CNN is chasing after Fox News stories. Apparently what they'll do is they'll find a story and put a Fox emoji next to it because they know Fox's ratings are going up. They know the website, foxnews.com is doing better than ever. They know that there is Trump fatigue, but it's not necessarily in the way you think. While some of it is people saying, I'm tired of hearing about the orange man being bad. Move on, please. Look at this chart. So they go to Fox News to get something different. And as noted by, I think it was um, a a Columbia Journalism Review, may have been, they said that Fox News covers anything of interest. So maybe people are tired of going to the front page of a website and seeing 39 mentions of the word Trump. Or in this instance, let's say 53 on front page of Politico. Now again, 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 Politico is a political website. I understand that. But there's a lot of other things to talk about. You know, when you look at the search results for Obama, it just wasn't there. People didn't care as much. So you know what? We can talk about all of the things going on that Trump has done that's bad. And in the end, I believe Trump has all of these things in his favor. I believe 
that the that, okay. So I'll, I'll, let me. I'll, I'll end with this point. We're we're living in Trump world, baby. You can't escape it. There's nothing you can do to stop it. I had to make a video about Trump talking about how we all won't stop talking about Trump because there's nothing you can do. But I will stress, in 2016, they, people ragged on the media saying you gave him all of this free attention. You know, was it $5 billion in free press or something? He spent very little relative to the other candidates. He didn't have to. They wouldn't shut up. Look at this. It's on the screen. Look how much they wouldn't shut up. They just loved it so much. They're addicted to the guy. So how is it that we've known this? We have known that this press helped Trump in 2016, and they have been completely oblivious to the fact that they are helping him again. And they say things like, oh, you know, Trump's going to lose in every matchup. Oh, you'd be surprised, buddy. How many people, young people, are going to get up and vote Trump because they're just sick and tired of your BS? It's a lot of people. I've heard from a lot of people who say they want to vote for the president because they want to stick it to the media and they want to stick it to the Democrats and they want to stick it to the far left. So that's what I see. I could be wrong. You'd think the negative press would hurt the guy, but his base is bigger than ever. That's from the New York Times. His approval rating is higher today than it's, you know, it's averaging around in the past month higher than it's been in the past two years. And his favorability is up. It's not doing what you think you're doing. It's free, free press. It's good. I'm going to end with one thing. Okay, I'm sorry if I said, listen, Trump derangement syndrome has a Wikipedia entry. There is a Wikipedia (laughs) entry for Trump derangement syndrome. So you know what? When you have done something so much in the press that we now have to explain it to people, what's wrong with with, with this country, you know, you've given him billions upon billions upon billions of dollars of free press. And as we have known for how long? Where did the phrase come from? There's no such thing as bad press. So I hope you realize media, the media that hates the man that endorsed Hillary Clinton, you are securing his reelection because we live in his world and you can't get away from it because you don't want to get away from it because you're addicted to a drug, the Trump bump. And we're all now stuck in this whirlpool. It's hard to escape. But there you go. I'm sure all the Trump supporters are laughing all the way to the to, to the voting, to the polls, all the way to the polls, knowing that either people are going to be so sick and tired of politics, they just ignore it. They're going to turn off election night. They're going to say, I am done. I don't care. Okay. I know a lot of people who wanted Bernie and it was Bernie or bust. And after that election, they said, I am out. And they just haven't looked back since. And these are my friends. I talk to them. I say, are you paying attention? They say, I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't care. I am out. And uh, I don't blame them. I was at the skate park. Okay. I I know I said, but I got, I got, this is such a profound issue. I was at the skate park, right? And there were some like 16 year old kids skating. And we were talking about like fake news and stuff. And then all of a sudden one kid goes, why won't they stop talking about Trump? And I was like, yes, (laughs) that's the question. Because we were talking about like how the media puts out fake stories and the narrative. And the kid said like, I don't even watch TV anymore. Like my parents don't either because they would just turn it on. And it's like, there's Trump again. And so finally they were like, yeah, okay. And they just turn the TV off and walk away. They turn the, look, I turn the TV on to hear about an oil spill. The Amazon rainforest fires. Instead, the big breaking story, the trend everywhere is not a fire in the Amazon forest. I have to talk about Trump again because you won't stop. No, listen, I am conscious of this. And I assure you, I will make conscious decisions to avoid talking talking about what Trump wants me to talk about. But I will stress this point as I leave. They know it's a distraction. Trump's trying to distract again. It doesn't matter if Trump's trying to distract you. President Trump's distraction strategy. Donald Trump's bizarre theatrics are a brilliant tactic to distract. Here's the final, final thought. I know I kept saying one more point. The last point, Trump is pulling puppet strings. You may claim it's not 4D chess. You can call the man dumb. But how many times do the media have to say he's distracting us on purpose and they won't stop? They love it. They know what Trump is doing. They know he's doing it on purpose. They don't care. The money is too good. Why stop now, baby, when the Trump bump is driving those ratings home? As they said uh, in the Real Clear Politics story, it's, uh, what is it? It's, 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 um, they say it's reviving American journalism. I wouldn't call it journalism. I would call it tabloid crap. <laughs> and it's getting pretty annoying. But hey, you can't help it. Uh, they, they can't help it. And I bet Trump supporters are laughing because it's one of the reasons they probably supported the guy. He has the ability to distract, control, manipulate, and his plan works. There's the free press. I think he's going to win. Next segment's coming up at 6 p.m. YouTube.com slash TimCastNews. Thanks for hanging out at the, for this half an hour rant. And I will see you all then in the next segment.